example I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna try to hold the chuck here and turn it on and you're gonna hear it stop you'll hear it bog down it's gonna stop generating see there now it's not working this is the reason I was telling you you don't necessarily have to have a fuse or circuit breaker on there if you short it out it just stops working then to get it to work again grab the motor up a little bit and it starts generating again. If it don't start generating again, you get a bump it with power, and I'll demonstrate that here in a minute. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put an overload on it. I got all eight bulbs screwed in, so that's 800 watts, so I'm going to plug it in. You'll probably hear it try to start generating, and it's just going to quit. And we're going to pretend like it. I can't get it to charge back up by revving the motor up. And I'll show you how you charge the rotor going to manual with the power. Quit generating. Now let me get the cord hooked up and I'll show you how you start it. Okay, now what we got here, see this orange wire coming up here? That's power coming straight out of my garage, plugged into 120. And I got my generator cord here plugged into the outlet. It runs over to another plug. Now if you make a cord like this, be extremely careful because if you plug this into hot power, power if you plug it into power, the plug's gonna be hot and you just touch it and you're gonna get shocked and if you have an actual generator, it's best to have it hardwired directly to a circuit breaker back feeding into a panel. That'll be another video later on this summer or next year. So what, now what we're going to do, I got the two bulbs down on the end screwed in, and as you can see, it's not generating. So I'm going to plug, I'm going to plug the generator into the house power just for about a split second until I see the light bulbs come in. I'm going to unplug it, and that's going to charge the rotor in the generator, and it's going to start generating again. time you need to charge the rotor like I just did is if you shut the generator down under load or if you got a motor that when you build a generator don't start generating right off the bat then you won't have to charge it like I did you can also do it with 12 volts DC either one will work but most of the time if you if it stops generating on you you can just rev the throttle up a little bit on the engine for a couple seconds then bring it back down to your speed and it should start generating again Anytime you use that method with the throttle, unhook, unhook your load first, then rev your engine up, then bring it back down to the speed, then plug your load in and it should work. If not, you're going to have to charge the rotor. Okay, now I'm going to do a short circuit test on it. Now what you're going to see me do, do not try to do this yourself. It's very dangerous. I got an extension cord here cut off. I'm going to 
plug it in there. And when it gets up to speed, I'm going to short it out. Like it says at the bottom of the screen here, do not try this yourself. I can't be held responsible for your safety. Okay, now I'm going to shut it off under load. We're going to see how hard it is to get it to start again. Might have to charge the rover again. Let me start it up again. If you shut it off under load, that's what you have to do. Now I'm going to start it up under load, and you're going to see the light, the bulb won't come on. I'm going to unplug it and try to hook it up and see if it'll start. If not, I'll rev it up and try it again. If it didn't start, you'd have to rev it up, and then Put the load on after you rev it up. Also, another good point to bring up: don't ever rev the engine while you got a load on it. It'll uh, when you rev the engine up, it changes the frequency. It makes a higher frequency and higher voltage. You can blow up whatever you got plugged in, and plus you can blow up your capacitor if you got a lower rating capacitor. My capacitors are rated for about 350 volts, so there I'm pretty well covered on that. I'm going to demonstrate, you'll see, the, I'm going to demonstrate giving it throttle, and you'll see the two bulbs get brighter. That's really pushing it. I'm going to hook the voltmeter up and we'll see how much fire it's going. And it's putting out between 111 and 113 volts. I'm going to rev it up just to demonstrate how fast your voltage can climb. Okay, fine. You ran it up just a little bit and had it almost up to 220. Now I'll show you the frequency. Right now, out on under load is 57 hertz. Now I'll rev it up, you'll see the frequency change. It went up about 75 hertz there. And anytime you got an open belt like this, be extremely careful. You can get your finger or your hand caught in there or your shirt tail or anything. If you have a belt set up like this, try to stay away from it as far as possible. If this was a permanent setup, I'd have a belt guard on it. As you can see, this pulley on the electric motor is sitting sideways just a little bit, and that's why the belt's jumping so much. And the reason is the motor mount shot on this motor. I got tired of fooling trying to get the angle right, so I just left it alone. It ain't gonna be running that long anyway. And don't forget your shutdown procedure. Unhook your load, and let it idle for a few minutes, a few seconds, enough to just make sure everything. Then you can shut your motor off. And like I said, don't rev the engine while you have a load under it. I did here just for a demonstration. It was the worst thing that could happen was I blow the light bulbs, which I could have blown a capacitor, but they're rated for 300 and some volts. And I was only putting up about 200 when I had it revved about halfway up. And the only reason the engine's idling while I'm running it is for one, this is a six and a half horsepower engine. 
and for a small third horsepower motor like this putting out about 200 watts you only need about a one or a two horsepower engine anyway and besides that the two pulleys are about the same size so the RPM is about the same between the two and that motor the electric motor is rated for about 1800 RPM well, 1750 to be exact and the engine idles about 1800 so that works out pretty good if you was using a one or a two horsepower engine you'd want like a probably about a six inch pulley on the electric motor and like a three inch over here so that your ratio is cut in half that way if this motor if your motor spend at 3600 rpm that motor will be spent at 1800 like it is here that way you're getting full power out of your engine and your governor will keep the rpm constant and like i said this engine is a little overkill for this you don't need nowhere near six and a half horsepower I couldn't tell but the right light was on on here it's always important to test your polarity on one of these uh, on a generator like this that way you're, not, you're making sure that your hot and your neutral is not reversed now you notice the middle light was on if you plug it in on an outlet that's wired correctly both yellow lights will come on if you ever have the red light come on you got something wrong now the reason it's reading the open ground which is the, the third prong on this is because it's not tied into anything I didn't tie it into the neutral here which actually you probably should that way if you ever get a short on something like if a wire came loose in that box it would short out against the frame there and like my intro said in this video don't do nothing like this unless you feel comfortable doing it yourself and have had safety training electricity is nothing to play around with now I am a licensed electrician and I've been through all the safety training and everything with electricity and I feel comfortable doing it myself and that's the only reason I'm doing it if I ever come up with something that I'm scared to do it, I don't do it because you don't ever want to do nothing that you're not comfortable doing electricity is just like a roofer you don't want to be a roofer if you're scared of heights you don't want to be an electrician if you're scared of electricity well guys I appreciate you all watching this video if you got any questions, just leave me a comment on this video or send me a message and I'll, uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I always try to answer all comments and messages as soon as possible.